Hi, it's Faith Turner coming to you from Granite City High School in Granite City, Illinois. This is episode 3 of the audio record, and the date is December 7, 2018. This podcast has been brought to you by Granite High World, Granite City High School's leading source for the latest news, sports coverage, entertainment, and more. So, last time I was on, I was talking about silent films. I'm sticking with the entertainment theme, but I'm going to talk about one of my favorite things in the entire world, vinyl records. I actually collect vinyl, it's one of my favorite things. I'm an audiophile, being a musician, and just an avid music lover. Plus, I mean, you can't get too much better audio sound than from a record anyways. But it just makes my heart happy that vinyl is coming back. Aesthetically, vinyls are great. The covers are fantastic, especially the art inside, like when you open up the cover. And now, even the color records look and even sound good. Plus, just the joy of going to the record store, my favorite being going down to Dead Wax on Cherokee Street in St. Louis. Not sponsored. It gives me great happiness. Just searching for the exact record that you've been wanting and testing it just isn't something that you get from listening to music digitally. And don't get me wrong, I'm a Spotify Premium member, but my 500 plus record collection does get a lot of love. So here's this history of the vinyl LP, and then I'll go into detail about how they're made. So, Thomas Edison first invented the phonograph, the first device to record and playback sounds and music in 1877. It recorded sound directly as grooves on the sheet of tin foil wrapped around a cylinder, which could then be played back by rotating the cylinder, thus vibrating the mechanical diaphragm accordingly and to reproduce the sound. By the 1880s, a company named Volta Labs created a superior wax-coated cylinder whose stylus vibrated laterally, kind of like a seismometer, to inscribe the wax with a recorded sound, unlike Edison's, which moved vertically. It wasn't until the early 20th century that the cylinder was finally replaced by a flat disc record we know of today. But even then, sounds were recorded directly onto the disc. Acoustical recordings like these relied on a large horn connected to a stylus. As sound waves caused the horn and stylus to vibrate, which put the vibrations to a hand crank wax disc. As a result, these low fidelity recordings sound like a muffled yell. To make the disc louder, you'd have to sacrifice your disc as it would wear down the groove. Another problem is that a bass note was so much taller than that of a higher pitch note. A bass note is a lower frequency, which means that it would take up more room than a disc, literally pushing out any room for mid and higher frequencies on a disc. The result were discs that played back to stored in super bass heavy sounds. In the mid-1920s, the audio input was ran through a mic and amp to boost the dynamic range in horn volume instead of the sound and volume coming physically from the horn. This is when the era of, of electrical recordings began. These recordings intentionally rescaled upper and mid-range sounds and suppressed the bass, or suppressed the bass essentially equalizing the sounds. 78s, records that spun at 70 RPM, were seen as like the best thing since bread. I have some 78s and they're really heavy, but they're pretty robust. With 78s, you can fit like two songs on each side because of how fast they had to spin. The introduction of 33 RPM discs in the 50s really boomed. They could play more music due to the fact that the discs were bigger and the rate that the record spun was slower, thus being able to fit more grooves. Now, when a record would be recorded, it would then be dubbed into a master disc to eventually be copied and distributed. This master disc is known as a lacquer acetate disc, even though records are actually coated with cellulose nitrate, but it's whatever. The master disc is physically cut, its groove meticulously gouged out by a record cutting machine's needle. Once the audio has been transcribed and the playback quality verified, the master disc is sent to be reproduced. The lacquer is far too malleable to be used in the actual production process, so a metal cast must be made of it. But once the plate was thick enough, the wax was stripped away, leaving a sturdier metal mold. Modern techniques involve dipping the disc into a solution of stainless chloride and then spraying on an antimonized silver. After the initial silver plating was hardened, a layer of copper was applied, followed up by a layer of steel. Once enough metal was applied to support the silver plate, the lacquer smashed free of the mold, leaving the matrix. The matrix is still pretty malleable. The matrix so it must be recast once more before it can begin pressing vinyl. A metal record known as the mother is cut from the matrix and then replayed to create another negative known as the stamper. Each stamper, which is attached to a 100 ton hydraulic press, basically a huge waffle iron, puts out thousands of records. A sheet of preheated vinyl, roughly half the area but three times the thickness of a finished disc, known as the biscuit, 
The slip between the jaws of the pressed 300 degree Fahrenheit steam is applied to further soften the material before the jaws close and squeeze the hot vinyl into its final shape all while imprinting the audio. The disc is then cooled and hardened in a water bath and labeled. Once it comes off the stamper, the record's edges are trimmed into a neat circle on an automated trimmer table and the record is inspected not just for how it looks, but the playback quality as well. Finally, the LPs that are quality enough then are then packaged and shipped out to your local music shop. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into making vinyls. And to me, it's almost like an art. There's so much that goes into making them, but the result is great. Also, the fact that we've been using them, using some form of vinyl record for over 100 years is fantastic. It just shows that they're just truly timeless. Thank you for tuning in to the audio record. If you enjoyed today's podcast, head over to greenathighworld.com to gain access to our latest articles, podcasts, and much more.